Hi. In this video I'm going to demonstrate a few free online tools that will help you clean and color old photos in Family Search. So, here I am in Family Search. I've found an old family photo of my distant relatives, the Parker family. To download this photo to my laptop, I go to the Actions drop-down menu and choose Download. This will download the image to my Downloads folder. Once the photo is there, I'm going to drag it to my desktop. For me, that makes it easier to work with it. Now, I'm going to show you a free online web tool that is very much like Adobe Photoshop. It is called Photopea. To get the photo into Photopea, I can just drag it from the desktop, and drop it onto my browser window. I see there are some edges that I'd like to crop out. I'll grab the crop tool and crop in, on the top, and on the right side. Then I'll press return on my keyboard to accept the crop. I find it easiest to work with a black and white photo when I'm doing repairs. To desaturate the image, I'll press command U on my Mac, that would be control U on a Windows computer. Then, I will drag the saturation slider all the way to the left, and then click the OK button. I see that this photo needs more contrast. We can remedy this with a levels command. I'll press command L to bring up a levels dialog. The graph at the top shows the levels of light and dark in this image, from pure black on the left, to pure white on the right. Underneath, there are three sliders. A black slider on the left, a white slider on the right, and a gray slider in the middle. The graph is showing me that there are only mid-tone grays. There are no real blacks or dark grays. I can take the black slider and move it to the left edge of the graph to bring back darks in the image. Look at what a difference that made. I can take the white slider and move it to the right edge of the graph to bring back missing lights in the image. The gray slider adjusts the mid-tones lighter or darker, if you need to adjust further. I am happy with what I have for now, so I'll just press OK to accept the dialog. Now I'm ready to work on removing scratches and spots. I like to zoom in close to do this. I'll press Command plus a few times to zoom in closer. Press Command minus a few times to zoom out. Press Command 0 will fit the image to the window. So, I'm going to zoom in quite close. I can use my trackpad to move around in the image. There is an awesome tool called the Spot Healing Brush Tool. It is used to remove spots and scratches. Pressing the letter J on your keyboard is the shortcut to this tool. This is a brush tool. The trick to using it is to adjust the size of the brush to be just slightly larger than the spot you're trying to remove. Then, when you paint with the brush, artificial intelligence is used to look around that spot and intelligently fill it in. Pressing the right square bracket on your keyboard will increase the size of the brush each time you press it. Pressing the left square bracket will decrease the brush size each time you press it. Then you just paint over the spots. If it doesn't quite work right, adjust the size of the brush a bit and try again. Now, watch for just a minute while I use the spot healing brush to repair this photo. On the edge of her face, that one didn't work very well. Whenever I goof, I immediately press Command Z to undo it. I'll zoom in and adjust the brush size and try again. That worked much better. To save you time, I'll speed things up a bit. This is the grunt work part of restoring a photo. It took me about 15 minutes to get all the spots and scratches removed. But what a difference it has made. I'm going to bring up the levels dialog again, and use the gray slider to adjust the photo just a bit more. Remember, pressing command L will pull up that dialog. Moving the gray slider to the left will expand the lights in the image. 
Moving the slider to the right just a bit will expand the darks a bit more. I think that looks even better. Now we're mostly done with Photopea, and it's time to colorize the photo using a different tool. We'll come back to Photopea in a bit. I'd like to export it as a JPEG image. To do that, go to the File menu, choose the Export, and then choose JPEG. In this dialog, I like to set the quality to 100%. Here you can also see the size this will be saved. When you click Save, the file will download to your computer using a typical Save dialog box. One of the best online free and paid colorizers is palette.fm. When you colorize a photo here, you can download a small, low-resolution version for free, or you can pay to download a high-definition version. Let me show you how to use the free download to colorize your photo. First, I'll drag my JPEG file onto the palette.fm window. It will upload to the Artificial Intelligence Colorizer, and create a base palette. If you hover over the image while the base palette is created, you can see the text the server is using to colorize this image. There are many other presets that you can try out just by clicking on them. I will click on a few of them so you can see some examples. Outdoor Vibes has done a nice job. I'm going to compare that, with the base palette. Those two look very close to each other. Let's look at Bright Studio. It's too yellow for my taste. I'll try Vintage Charm and Ambient Historic. They are okay, but I think I like the Outdoor Vibe the best. So let's go download that one. Oh, before I do, let me show you one more awesome feature of Palette FM. Earlier, I said if you hover over the image, you can see the text the artificial intelligence used to colorize the photo. See that pencil icon? You can click it, and the modify the text used to colorize the photo. For example, I could specify gray suits, and then click on the colorize button at the right. If you click on the HD button, you'll be taken to a screen where you can purchase high-definition downloads. Click on Download to download a free, low-resolution version of the colorization. This is what we'll do. I'll show you how to use Photopea to still get a high-resolution image. After all that, I think I'll go with the base palette version of the colorization. To get back to that one, I'll click on the palette button and then go download it. I've opened my black and white JPEG in Photopea. Now I'm going to drag the low resolution colorization from my desktop on top of the black and white image. See how small it is compared to our black and white JPEG. I'm going to use the corner handles to resize the color image, so it's exactly the same size as the black and white one. When we added the color image on top, Photopea created a new layer on top of the black and white layer. You can see that on the right in the layers palette. I'll click on the eye icon in the color image, so you can see that the black and white layer is still there. Then I'll click on the eye icon again to turn the color layer back on. When we resize the low resolution color layer, it became quite pixelated. Since all we need is the color from this layer, I'll click on the word, normal, in the layer palette for this color layer, and change it from normal to color. Now we have the higher resolution black and white layer being just colored by the color layer. That's the trick to using the low resolution free download from Palette FM. AI colorizers will often not do a perfect job. Look at this woman's dress, partly blue, partly brown. Let's fix that. The eyedropper tool will allow you to click on a color and choose that color in this color layer. The letter I is the shortcut. Now press the letter B for the brush tool. In the blend mode drop down above, change the brush from normal to color. Then you can adjust the brush size and start painting with that color. If you get the message, the smart object must be rasterized first, go ahead and click OK.
Darn. I painted some of this gentleman's arm. I'll press I for the eyedropper and sample a color from his suit, then switch back to the brush tool to fix that mistake. It's time to export this as a JPEG image once again, so I can show you another free tool that will clean up the photo, uses artificial intelligence to sharpen the faces, and double its resolution, all in a couple clicks. So I don't get confused, I usually delete all the earlier JPEGs I've created. There are three artificial intelligence tools I use. All of them are free, and online. Here they are. They all do the same thing, and are easy to use. For this tutorial, I will use Base 10. Here we are at the Base 10 site. I'll click choose a file and open the Parker Family JPEG I just saved. Once it is uploaded the file name will appear. Then you can click on the Restore Photo button. Base 10 will then work on the photo. Where the Restore Photo button was will turn into a spinning, I'm busy type of icon. It may take up to a minute or two to work. On the left, you'll see your original image. When the work has completed, you'll see the finished image on the right. Then, you can click the Download the Restored Photo link. You will then see the full-sized finished photo that Base 10 worked on. I like to scroll around and look at the difference Base 10 has made, particularly on the faces. To save this, I'll just click and drag the photo onto my desktop. Usually, I'll pull this image into Photopea to eliminate any further problems that I see. Once done with that, I'll export it again as a JPEG image. A couple of final thoughts. I've found that nearly all of the tools and shortcuts in Photopea are the same as in Photoshop, which is the tool I use to do these restorations. I wanted to show you that there is a free tool online that does the same thing, mostly. Photoshop is definitely more powerful, but you'll find that Photopea is a great alternative. Finally, let's look at a before and after view of the Parker family photo. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. I'm Nathan Smith. The narration voice I've used is Speechalo, from Blaster Online.